Can I get a one in the chat if you're excited for Evan to come on the show? Hey, oh, hey, 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 Nick is nearly
I love you. Alright, I'm gonna start this fucking show once you put this fucking stream onto fucking Reddit. Do you understand me? Someone has to post this fuck. Don't cut me off, editor, alright? I want this fucking stream on Reddit. On Reddit, right? Fuck. Now. Just won't put it on Reddit. It's unbelievable. waiting on the call but no one's put it on reddit so we're just gonna have to sit here all day it's unbelievable Welcome everybody to today's show. We have Evan coming on in just a moment. How are we all today? We going well? JJ Maiden, Strawbeb, Nind Sin, Gray T, Sydney, Franklin Clinton, Dracula. Q Seo Avox Impractical Gamer Hilp 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 San San Riley Kisma Dante Ozzy 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 All right Who's ready Whoa what's What the fuck Okay guys I want you to do me a favor Okay What the fuck Okay, so Evan is obviously Australian, so we're going to bro out about Australia at the start here. But what I want to tell you is that I am in Australia. He's in New York. Why don't you go over and have a look at the time in Australia right now? And you will respect. Okay, let's get him in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And please send in the Super Chats if you want to get your question read out, guaranteed, as well as best as I can, hopefully, and um, or just leave them in the chat. I will be checking that as well. James Tukino, you can send me some uh, some good questions via Twitter if you want, brother. All right. Okay, without further ado, Evan. Evan, Evan, Evan. You ready? Evan, can you hear me, can you hear me a, mate? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey. Sorry, my thing's on Cyprus. Um, I don't know how to change it. So what happened? Oh, the name, the name on my. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's all. All good, brother. I knew it was you. I knew it was you. How How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Are you currently in Australia? I am, man. I'm in Melbourne. Oh, I'm jealous. What time is it over there? It must be late. 
or have early. 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I'm in Brooklyn right now, and it's currently 2 p.m. Yeah, you, but, you're based in New York now because you, you grew up in Melbourne, right? Yeah, I grew up in Melbourne. Um, and then I moved, I moved to LA originally. And then uh, I came here very recently, pretty much like uh, the day the quarry was released. I think I was a week officially living here. By the way, I should tell you, we are live. Um, <laughs> everyone in the chat is saying, yeah. Evan! Zach Tinker is actually watching. And he hey! Just say hi to everyone. Um, so everyone, Zach says hello, or Jacob, as you all know. Zach, you're next, brother, if you're watching. We'll work out a time. But uh, I heard you two were going to do maybe a little stream, Evan. Yeah, once the um, the the co-op is available, that online one, him and I are going to – we'll we'll do a, t a live stream together. I don't know if we're going to do Twitch or anything. Yeah. Miles um, has been, like, very helpful. I know he's been struggling with trying to get that working, and so – He's been pretty helpful with like our setup and, and everything. He even offered me to just like come over to his and um, yeah, play there. Like, so I might even do that before the game, uh, before Zach and I have a crack at it. But no, nah, I really want, I really want to play it with Zach. He was my, the, like the first person and um, that I met on set and probably my, my like third friend I ever made in like Los Angeles. So yeah, I love him to death. Peanut butter, butter pops, man. <laughs> you know, but it felt so weird learning that and trying to figure out what we were going to do and um yeah it looks so great when you see it on screen we got a lot to talk about brother but i really appreciate you coming on and um it's great to talk to another aussie i've only ever had two other aussie guests out of a hundred um okay. so you are representing well brother um are you missing oz at all I'm missing Oz. I was actually in Melbourne uh, a couple months ago, uh, you know, being homesick and just missing that Australian accent. So it's good to hear it. But um, to be honest, you know, when you go home and you, you spend a lot of time with your family, it, it's good for about a week or two. And <laughs> I, go back to, I need to go back to America. But I do miss it. I get, I get homesick a fair bit. Um, I miss kebabs. I miss a good Donna kebab. Uh, and a HSP, I miss all of that. But um, I mean, the food here is cheap, and the alcohol is cheap. So <laughs> there's some yeah. perks. Yeah, there's some perks about here. <laughs> what about um, Tim Tams and Vegemite? I'm stocked up, mate. I yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> stuff and uh, my 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 missus, uh, my girlfriend won't even eat like look at Vegemite. So that's all me. <laughs> that, um, I don't know. I don't know how many Australians listen to this, but uh, if you if you all remember Kraft peanut butter, um, like it's never oily, it's never dry. That's uh, I'm also stocked up on that. I miss cordial, to be honest. I miss Coddy's cordial. <laughs> I'm just so being a stereotypical Australian right now. You've you um now we're really gonna go Australian. Bear with us, guys. If you're not from Australia, um, AFL. Are you an AFL man at all? I am. I am. I actually am wearing the colours I for the team I support. Hold on. Can... No way. Hold on. Yeah. What colours? Am I? Is that black and white? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I support. Yeah, baby. That's it. I knew. I knew we were going to be friends. Um, uh, actually, there's an AFL team here in Brooklyn, and they're the Brooklyn Magpies. They are too. Yeah. Nice. So I reckon I should go down there and uh, kick the pill around. I haven't played football for years. I'll probably like break an ankle or something, but you know, it'd be fun to have a kick. How would you explain it to the to the uh, Yanks? It's like NFL, basketball, soccer. <laughs> Not. I don't know. That's probably the best explanation. How would you explain it? Like, I'm yeah. just trying. To NFL, but. A um, bit more scrappy, yeah. bit of rugby yeah. in there, bit of yeah, bit of basketball. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. Um, it's, it's like Pete, everyone heard about those games, got explained, like it all got explained to everyone at once, and everyone was drunk while they were listening, <laughs> and then they created this game. So that's that's Australian football for you, ladies and gentlemen. And you used to play, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I used to play. Yeah. Um, 
Colin Fitzroy for Fitzroy. So, um, oh, you could have been complaining for Collingwood if you weren't an actor, eh? Oh, yeah, de- yeah, definitely. No, I, was, <laughs> I, I used to like, I loved the by the end of, end of it, like the partying aspect, you know, like years after, um, after a game and mm. and all. I was, I was more into um into like boxing so i did boxing a lot i actually did that in collingwood as well because I, I grew up there and um yeah just just always loved my sport but um you know loved film and tv so it was kind of like two two loves that were very very different but um at the same time are very very much the same especially like when it comes to like uh you know your approach with acting and and dedicating yourself to a craft i feel like sports people understand that more than like a lot of people yeah and i I guess you can't you can't really pursue both professionally i mean that's pretty tough isn't it you got to pick one or the other really wayne the rock johnson or something like that or or like (laughs) ron james you know even then yeah it's pretty difficult i'd say but i'm to be honest i I wouldn't change it you know acting is the funnest thing i think i could ever ever think about doing it's like playing make-believe for for real you know you're pretending to be someone different every day it's it's on it's honestly the funnest gig ever yeah tough, tough to go, but you know it's still fun and you did you start with what was your first gig was it was it fantasy island was it home and away as in like a, a big sort of takeoff because uh so it, or was it star trek it, it was um it actually was uh fantasy island so i, I auditioned things back home from Oz which got me a little bit of notice and a little bit of interest but the the role I landed was a small role on uh this horror movie called Fantasy Island um for those of you who have watched it I apologize and for those of you who haven't seen it don't watch it um what do you mean it, it, it is the, <laughs> like a cheesy it's like cheesy degraded horror movie it's great it was great fun to film and everything but it's not winning awards or breaking the box office or anything like that it was just cool it was it was a, a cool thing to film and there was a bunch of cool people you know who were there the cast and the crew and the director it was just a great time um and then from there i uh i booked star trek and then you know like three weeks i think after filming fantasy island i was in america in the middle of the the desert in santa clarita for those of you who don't know it's um just outside of la it's like an hour drive and there's nothing to do there so i was <laughs> About four weeks before I was like, you know, sorry if I'm swearing too much. Fuck this and no, nah, just moved. fucking swear, mate. It's all good. Okay, so that, I, I normally have to like watch my watch what I say. No, no. Bloody, you bloody you know, Siobhan. I mean, you couldn't. She just kept saying the f bomb. You couldn't shut her up, really. The Brits, they have potty mouths. That's <laughs> we're, we're more, um, you know, we're more uh, sophisticated with that. Oh, Australians, we're so fucking sophisticated, aren't we? You know, the most sophisticated bunch in the world but um yeah I did, did star trek and then actually when the show premiered that's when i i got uh the quarry so that was like 2020 and then did the body scans and uh met a couple of the people i'm not sure if zach was there that day uh, but maybe he was and then uh you know the world shut down so i was stuck in melbourne for i can't even remember how long but and then i left uh i left to film the quarry january 1st 2021 wow wow uh, you how how was the excitement because i know you must have been elated when you got star trek and when you got fantasy island but what what sort of excitement for this project did you have when you when you knew you had it well i knew everyone was telling me about until dawn and that was the and i had to figure out what that was too because my, all my mates back home are big video gamers like i i used to jump on like cod and like play Tony Hawks and like Pro Skater and everything. Which like which that. card, by the way? What's your fave? The Modern Warfare Two. Oh, all two. The- nice. And I don't know what um people call like we all used to call like teddy bears, you know, whenever you yeah. Out. And so and like Rust and and all of that. So I, I was big into that, and then you know Black Ops came out and zombies and everything like that. So we were all like had a pretty like tight knit crew on like uh xbox 360 and we we're playing that a lot but I, I had a few few friends who early on were getting into like you know video games are like actual storyline and so my friend when when i told i actually rang him i'm like have you heard of this game like until dawn he's like what the, he's like what are you talking about like what 
what, what's going on? Tell me everything. And I'm like, I'm auditioning for this thing. And he's like, you have to do it. Like you have to do it. If you can get this, like, it'll be, you know, fucking amazing. And, you know, by, by luck, um, you know, I happened to get it. And then I, you know, played until dawn, like nonstop. And I think the last time I played, it was, I think the night before I had to start filming at like 5am or 6am. So I had to like wake up, drive to Santa Monica where we were taping and I just remember being so tired, but so excited. <laughs> yeah. Because when we get ripped, it's like, this thing's 900 pages long. You can't read the whole thing. Well, I was going to ask, um, how many pages do you read of a 900-page script? I, got up to, I, I think I did pretty well. I got to, like, page 320, and I was like, I'm done. Like, I can't. <laughs> nice. Nice. It was like the script we got at, in January 2020 was a little bit different to the script we got um january 2020 or actually december 2020 um changed did it yeah not, not too much just like you know dialogue and certain yeah. scenes where they were um yeah but yeah never thought i thought reading scripts i'd only ever have to read 100 pages but no i, I pushed through and did like 350 but I, I didn't know majority of the endings too it just became too much like i knew, I knew where people died in certain points so playing it now I know what to do and like what not to do up to a certain point. And then I'm like, well, I'm just as clueless as everyone else. <laughs> are you, so have you played through it yet or are you yeah. waiting? Yeah, you have. Played through it twice. And then we're going to have a few people over and we're all going to do like a big group play. Um, you know, everyone can choose a character and just, you know, decide who does what, when, but um, yeah, two playthroughs. I think I killed, who was the first person I killed on the, and it was a complete. Because um... I, my first death was thanks to you, mate. You destroyed Ariel. You destroyed her. You just, as a werewolf, I was shocked. I couldn't yeah. believe what I just saw. And then yeah. I, I was able to rewind it. Um, you did the rewind? Yeah. Yeah. But because um, I didn't want to shoot you, you know, I wanted to. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's where they get you. They think mm. if it's our. Uh, a me or her situation or that like she'll just change and, and disappear but no nick fully decapitates her <laughs> holston's character, i killed holston's character and then i killed zach's character and, <laughs> and, and i think i'm sorry if i'm giving spoilers but i think nick i think i kill i think i kill him because i'm the i'm the one i'm the werewolf in the cage With, yeah you are too yes Jacob or Zach and I uh, with me in the game. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So do you get to do those werewolf scenes? Do you get to play as that or is that someone else doing that? No, so uh I got to do the turn like turning and throwing um like going like as you're going like turning into the Hulk or something, that part. Yeah, I, I got that's to, all you yeah. Oh, yeah, that was all me. It was so it was so, it felt so awkward because you're wearing like a scuba <laughs> you're not wearing your clothes you've got all of these dots on your face and you got this camera and they're like all right now you're on the ground and i'm like yep yeah. and like now you're gonna turn so like maybe get up like at your own pace and i'm just kind of like going, i'm like roaring out loud and you feel so silly doing it because you're in an empty room everyone else is in scuba suits or and you know the people are sitting behind the camera like the the computers like seeing your face and you know making sure the background and stuff like looks great and it's just like the most awkward thing. My vo my voice went hoarse. I remember from from yelling all the time. Even even going in the pool, when you push Nick in the pool or when Nick falls in the pool, we have to pretend there's water and we're like burning to death. So you're just there. Standing oh, you've got you've got yeah. some of the most awkward scenes now that I think about it, don't you? Yeah. In, in terms of yeah, being in the in the um, what do you call it? The volume. That's what you call it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah there were there were absolutely like you need i think a great imagination when you're um on a set like that but it's kind of freeing too because there's no like angles that they, they don't have to get you in a certain way they every angle um like camera angle you see in the game is something that they've done they've well, just there's no camera there it's just a room full of like nothing i guess i, I gotta commend you man because you know from a from a small kid from Melbourne and 
you know, you're playing Tony Hawks and Cod, you, you would have never thought you'd be in a game 10 years later, would you? I wouldn't have thought I'd be doing any of this. I wouldn't, if, you, if I could go back in time and tell like me 10 years ago that this is where I'm at, I probably would, you know, I wouldn't believe, I wouldn't believe it. I'd be like, you're talking shit. <laughs> and, and, and it's like I thought the game would do well, but um, the game's had such a, a positive response. Oh, isn't um, it? Yeah. Um, you know, I have people in, um, that I that I've known and I haven't spoken to, you know, since like elementary school, so primary school, sending me pictures of the quarry like at EB Games. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so that's GameStop back home for everyone who's in America. Uh, yeah. Posters, we're just, you know, they're kind of like shocked because the last time I think people sent photos of me like that, I did a Hungry Jack's commercial. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Burger King for everyone else listening. Um, I love how yeah, we have I'm, to translate everything. <laughs> I feel like I have to. I feel like I'm a translator. Uh. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah, that's what we call Burger King back home. And yeah, yeah. Last time I think anyone ever really like noticed me on on something, you know, people I haven't really like spoken to in, in years. But yeah. yeah, the response has been amazing. So many people are making these awesome fan edits, and yeah. there's so many people, all of these, these like fan, fantastic artists making all of these like drawings of us and and animations. It's just been incredible. Oh yeah, Brandon here says, um, "Hey, Evan, any tips to getting into acting?" Brandon, I'm the wrong. I'm going to let my dog out. Give me two seconds. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Keep the questions coming through, guys, for Evan. He'll be Uh, happy to uh, answer as many as possible. Actually, I'm the worst person to be asking that question. That's all right. That's all right. I've never really went to acting school. I went to film school, so I learned how to do things behind the camera. Learn, um, you know, the process of, like, writing a script, directing um, a show or a production or a short. We even did like a uh, live camera recording. So I'm actually not bad on um, on that if I was to ever become like a producer on a news, news set. But yeah, I kind of like fell into this. I, I, I dropped out of film school with like, I think four months uh, left, like shy of graduating just because I just wasn't vibing with it. And then I got offered to be uh, a runner. So that's like an assistant on this this show called The Real Housewives of Melbourne. You did um, not really. Yeah, yeah. I got. Wow. Uh, well, I, I had my godmother inquire if I wanted to work there, and I was like, I don't want to be fetching anyone like coffees and doing like ridiculous shit like that. So I was like, Nah, I'm good. And then a week later, I got um, scouted for modeling, and right. then did some photos because apparently I'm very good looking. Uh, and then, <laughs> And then I got signed in Sydney to an agency who ran an acting division and he kind of just pushed me towards acting. He's like, this is something like you should pursue. It's something that I I have always been interested in. And I was always doing theater in in, um, high school and in in elementary school. But anytime a teacher would tell me that I should pursue that, I'd be like, majority actors are unemployed. What do I want to like be out of work for, you know? So that's been my journey uh, the the only thing i could say is probably like go find an acting course look at actors that you that inspire you or that you like look up to and they don't have to be like people of note like um, i know I, I keep mentioning his name but like honestly zach i look up to him as an actor in his process he like works his ass off I, i've seen him you know like working on on auditions and just his process and everything and that's kind of like the, the approach people should have, you know, like really dedicate yourself to something, especially if it's something that you love and you're interested in and be patient because I'm not patient. And what's it like? Cause I'm guessing you, you moved to the States, uh, you know, not knowing many people, um, you know, with a lot of these projects, you, it's a bit of a, you know, new system, new sort of culture, new country. How did you sort of manage that? Uh, I think it's kind of like one of those things where it's sink or swim. There's no real way that you can like navigate it. Like people can give you advice, but everyone's journey is different. Like a lot of Aussies or Brits or whoever come that come over to America don't aren't there like working. They'll have to go work at a bar or become like a waiter or an Uber driver or something like that until something clicks and they start working. I was fortunate enough to 
you know, have a job before I left the country. Um, so navigating that was initially hard. I mean, like majority of the cast on Star Trek are older than me and have children. So that was interesting sitting there hearing about, you know, so-and-so going to kindergarten or elementary school. Uh, you know, I can't really contribute to conversations like that apart from talking about my, my sister's kids. But yeah. it was fun. It was, it was nice. I think the great thing about being an actor is no day is the same and no set is the same and no character or, you know, process is the same. So every day is different. And I think that's one of the exciting things about it. But it's also one of the more daunting things, you know, people who have jobs like uh, steady jobs will always have that job. Once, once our job's finished, we're unemployed again and we're looking for another one. We have to constantly look for work. It's like you're getting fired and yeah, every other, every six months, isn't it? Uh, the weirdest thing. Um, <laughs> And even if a show is popular as well, it doesn't mean you will, your character will come back. Or even even if the show is great, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be picked up for another season. Or if a movie's good, there might not be a sequel. You know, they might not want to make a sequel. And if they do, it might not be as good. So there's all these um, different uh, factors that you got to kind of like take in. But that's what makes it fun. Oh, yeah. I could imagine it would be a lot of fun. You've done such versatile things. The Quarry... Um, Star Trek and, you know, Fantasy Island. You've really sort of diverse yourself and you've probably got other stuff coming, I'm sure. Do you want to do more games, do you think? I'd, I'd love to do more games. I'd love to be in a Star Wars game just so I could, like, force push a bunch of, bunch of um, things. I remember playing, crap, what was it called? The Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed, uh, yeah. And, uh, that, was, that was amazing. But honestly, like, anything. I'd love to um, work on another horror game like this or really anything i heard um there's a game called train simulation and right now pringles are hiring someone to play a character they're an npc but they load the pringles into the vending machine <laughs> i don't know any people get into that if they're willing to enter the, the video game space but yeah i definitely love to do that i can see this medium as well just growing so quickly as well oh, because yeah. stories in in such a more well not just interactive but it's more in depth than even like movies and shows are it's like the depth of a book but with the visualness of um you know a movie or show yeah because i mean the quarry ends up being like i don't know like eight hours of cutscenes or something i don't know how many but it's almost like a four-part movie in a way or something isn't it it's uh it's it's unbelievable, but um, I've got some really good questions here. I might um, get to Evan. Uh, Evan, were you only interested in the Nick role, or did you try out for other characters? That's from James. Uh, James, I only tried out for the Nick role. I believe I was approached for the Nick role because I met casting. I flew back home during the bushfires. For those of you who don't know, our country was like pretty much burnt to a crisp for months because of the because of you know climate change and just poor poor government. But um, yeah, during then I, I met with cast the casting director for something else, and I only just remembered this the other day. Well, uh, I, I met with them and spoke to them about Australia and everything like that. And then come January, they approached me with the role of Nick, and so th that was always going to be I was. I didn't even know about any of the other characters until I um, until I think I, I met everyone on the set. Yeah, I believe most like everyone was approached yeah, for their role, or most were. Yeah, people were. I don't I don't know many people that were like um, you know, where it's like one one and out of a hundred people that are auditioning. Yeah. I think we're all. Yeah, if if people were auditioning, it would have been like maybe them and like three other people. I don't think it would have been many. Yeah. Wow. You weren't in Melbourne with the bushfires, were you? No, I was. I flew back home. Oh, um, you were, right. And the sky was all orange and everything smelled like it was being barbecued. Yeah, uh, crazy time. It's sort of – I sort of forget about it because COVID – I feel like COVID was straight after, wasn't it? So you sort of yeah. just forget about it a little bit. But, yeah, that was devastating, wasn't it? Yeah, they, that all happened within like 24 months. It was mm. – Australia copped it. A little bit yeah and so for the game because i know in in star trek you have the aussie accent right 
Yes. So, and also in this game, you've got the Aussie accent. Fantasy Island is American, right? Yeah. Um, I've never seen an Aussie be able to sneak in the accent so many times. How how are you doing this, mate? I'm not even- <laughs> This is the funny thing. Like, I, I, I Star Trek audition with an American accent. I came over, was doing everything in American accent. And then, um, you know, they just kind of came to me and they were like, everyone else in this cast, you know, we've got British people, we've got people from Nigeria. They're all, they all have accents. Like, why are we making this kid yeah. speak with an American accent? It just doesn't make any sense. So, in the final hour of filming, um, before we start, we were starting filming with Star Trek. They were like, "Do you want to do an Aussie accent?" And then Will Biles didn't even know I was Australian, so I'm guessing the the tapes and stuff he saw, you don't hear me talk, um, like you don't hear me, you know, talking as, as me. So when I met him, he's like, "Oh, you're you're Australian," and we got to talking. He's like, "You know, this is gonna sound real wild." Like he left five minutes later, he came back and he's like, "Would you want to do it in an Australian accent?" and I was hesitant at first because I'd just done Star Trek and Yeah, I, that's what I mean. Yeah. My voice. I hate hearing it like this. So I was a bit hesitant. He's like, no, 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 it'll be great. He's like, people come over to become camp counselors from all over the world. This makes sense. He's like, this would be like a cool little addition. He's like, we won't even like bring up the fact that you're Australian. It's just gonna be that's what it is. And I was like, I was humming and hiring and, and I'm like, yeah, all right, like let's do that. And it, it, I, I feel like it was a good addition. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. But it's just funny how you've been able to. Wrang- well, I guess you didn't really wrangle it. It sort of just fell in your lap both times, eh? Yeah, kind of like this career. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you're pushing for the Aussie accent at all, you know. No. Uh, and I maybe I, it, it'd be maybe I could just be the the Aussie in America. Who knows? Maybe that's what. <laughs> I, I have heard that like Aussies they they prefer to do American accents on set like it it makes them get into character better or something it just I've heard that from a lot of Aussies are you the same like is it is it easier to do another accent I feel like it's easier to disassociate myself from yeah, the character yeah like, so like when I watch myself talking like this I'm like well that's just me Whereas if I hear me, like when I hear myself on Fantasy Island, I'm like, that feels better because I can, I can pull away from it. When I watch Star Trek, even when I was playing the game, I'm like, like kind of cringing at my, at hearing myself. <laughs> Find the accent sometimes, especially when you're surrounded by Americans, like jarring, you know? Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. Hey, Evan, I'm Julian. I never get noticed too much, so I hope Dan sees this. My question is, how do you feel when you were casted as Nick? I mean, we sort of touched on that, but elated, I'm guessing, right? It was elated, but I was also um, drunk in London celebrating the Star Trek premiere. So when I got the call, I was like, fuck yeah, and I hung up. And, um, <laughs> so, and we noticed you, Julian, so you we don't always... You, Julian. Come on. Um, Olga here says, if you could ask Evan, does Nick think the relationship with Abby can be established well after the quarry events, given that they both survive? Uh, I mean, that depends on whose ending you are, you're going off of, because in some endings, I definitely can't, that, that relationship can't go on because she's decapitated. <laughs> but look, there is hope. I mean, I think with the, I think actually, you know what, I think that they would trauma bond very well after after something like that but i don't know if that's a healthy relationship i mean maybe the trauma bonding you know we experience this thing together that would bring them close but then i think they'd need years and years and years and years of therapy to um probably work something out together and i'm guessing you met ariel winter yeah she was lovely she's really really sweet um met i met most of the people on set we all didn't shoot together but we all shot stuff um at some point. You must have shot the scene where you kiss and all that. I know you don't actually kiss with a with a suit on, but that scene, you must have shot that together or not? I, we shot that scene together, but the scene with Holston and myself. Uh, uh, Holston was yeah, She was... What? Uh, yeah, was I me. can't believe that. No, it was me and Ariel, and then I was like this, or I was like this, and I'm just pretending there's someone there. And then, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that'd be that'd be difficult for me to do that. It felt, it felt so weird and like unnatural. And even when um, at least with air having Ariel on set, you know, I, I had some something to direct myself towards, whereas I didn't with with the other kiss. That was weird. It was a very weird day. <laughs> Oh, of course, the the truth or dare. That's what we're talking about, right? Is that the same way? Yeah, yeah, the truth or dare. So non- who's in that truth or dare soon? Who's actually on set? Brenda was there with me and Ariel. And Ethan Suppley was there too, but that's because we he but he he arrived later to film um something else. And maybe uh so- I think Justice was there too that day. Wow. So, yeah. no, yeah, no Zach? No, nah, no Zach. Uh, yeah, right. Were you there? It's not like he's going to be able to re- respond, but I think you were there. No, I don't think you were there that day. I don't think he was. Yeah, wow. What was your um, favourite scene to shoot? Was it, was, it, um, was it that werewolf transformation sort of one? Was that the most fun? That was the most fun. There's another yeah. early... And in the hospital, and we got to sneak out when Ethan's character, Ethan Suppley's character, comes through. And there was, there was, depending on what you choose, there was a cool bit where I like run out of him and like slam him up against the wall. That was pretty fun to film. Mm. But yeah, the transformation scene it was just so cool. And when we were filming it, we had you know only a few takes of doing it. Oh, also, peanut butter butter pops. Oh, of course. Yeah. That scene, that scene at the firing range is very very fun. Um, because we had like a fake gun and we just pretend to shoot shit. It was, it was cool. <laughs> yeah. It's hard not to film. It wasn't fun to film. Yeah. But the peanut butter scene, um, well, there's a, it's mentioned a couple of times, I think. That's on the script, I'm guessing. That's in the script. Yeah. When reading it, sounded like it, it was weird. We were both trying to figure out like how to sing the song and we were both very wrong. And then they had a <laughs> Uh, they had a recording of it, and we finally heard it, and we're like, "Oh, right, that's 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 pretty cool." But um, we, I think we also asked if that was they were real, and they're not a real thing. No, they're not. I looked it up. Maybe um, Zach and I should go on the business and create them. Whatever the hell. Oh, you might do it pretty well out of that, actually. Get a nice form. What are they again? Are they like um, Reese peanut butter things? I guess they're like that. Oh no, they're not. They're like popcorn or something it's like yeah it's yeah. like popcorn peanut butter it's it's in peanut butter and then chocolate so you pop them, <laughs> pop them in your mouth yeah. uh, all right uh let's have a look what else have we got here did you get the chance to improvise on your dialogue at all or was it all from the script that's from fez so uh some of it just like improv because you get given because there's so many different options with how the scene plays out. It's hard to remember all of that dialogue, even though they've got the like screens with the script there, you can't be like talking to someone reading the screen and then continuing. So you get the gist of it and try and like get most of the lines down pat. And if it plays out how they wanted it to play out, then we'll, we'll move on and do, and do another scene. But majority of it isn't um, improvised. Our dancing was, I mean, like shaking my ass to, uh, <laughs> You know, beat him in the shooting thing that was improvised. Yeah, but uh, how did you rate your dancing when you when you played it? Ten out of ten. Yeah, thought so. Eleven if, eleven if I could, but you know, it's yeah. not. It's not really. <laughs> Humble guy. Uh, um, <laughs> it's funny. Someone just said here was the dance improv. Um, question from Kerry: What do you think Nick's reaction would be to waking up in the forest after turning back into a human? Must have been very confusing. And cold. <laughs> yeah, mm. very cold. I, I mean, naked, waking up naked in the forest, I think I'd be more comfortable with it than Nick would be. But uh, <laughs> no, no, Sounds no, like uh, that's happened to you before. Many times. No, uh, <laughs> no, no, no like, I, I honestly think he would have been... If, if you have memory as well, I think there's no... We're not sure if you know what's going on when you're a werewolf and you have like no control. If that was the case and he like killed a bunch of people, then I think he'd be like very like horrified. But um, if he's woken up with like no memory and no recollection of anything, then 
shit, I don't know. He pro- honestly, he probably it depends how far away he is from camp. Yeah. There's a lot. I think I think he'd just be complaining about how cold he is and how far the walk is and where everyone else is and and is everyone else okay? Waking up covered in blood can never be fun. I was talking to Siobhan where someone said, "Oh, they'd love to see a sequel," and we're like, "Well, that's going to be quite tough with 186 endings. Which one is the canon ending? And how do you how would you even do a sequel?" So, um, but I'm guessing if they ever did, you'd be down. Wouldn't you? I'd be totally down. Even if they wanted to turn this into a movie, I'd be down, you know? Oh, um, yeah. That'd be a good idea. Also, the same thing, like, which is the canon ending and which is the... I, I, I think if they, like, I mean, it's, I know a lot of people wanted, like, an Until Dawn uh, sequel and, and everything like that. I think, I don't know, if something's good, don't ruin it with a sequel. Exactly. I t- something else good. I tend to agree. I know you're a bit of a horror buff as well. Any any you can recommend or that you've um, you've watched lately? I know you watched Scream. I, I enjoyed that one. I well. watched Ritual. Ritual. Okay. Ritual. A, a bunch of blokes. Is um, it new or is it old? I think it's newish. Uh, they on go high. Netflix? Netflix. I think so. Yeah. Might be on. Yeah, it must be on Netflix. The ritual. Yeah, scary, just like eerie. You don't know exactly what it's what it's about um, for like a long time in the movie, and like what the the scary. It's just different scary elements to it. And yeah, I, it wasn't made on a massive budget either. Still managed to you know scare the crap out of me. We only just watched that this weekend. Yeah, yeah. and Severance now too. So if anyone's watching that or isn't, get on that. Have you ever Apple. seen um, Saint Maud? St. Maud. It's no, an, a, eight, an A24 one. That's I, good, I, I recommend that it is. That mm. last that last scene, I still remember it. I I it's very haunting. Just the last oh I definitely recommend that one. St. Maud. Obviously hereditary, you've probably seen that. Um mm. Yeah, all those ones, you know. The um the Vitch, the Witch. The witch, yeah. Um, I watched one about like I can't even remember what it was. I think it's called like the tumor or something like that. Something like that. It's about this woman who like um, was born with this. I'm giving the story away, but like it, it's just a really bad Blumhouse film. Oh. Good, very proper like frights and stuff, but nothing like too like crazy. Is Fantasy Island Bl- Blumhouse? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but they, you know what? Like they're really good at, at what they do. They know horror, and like I think they're they're the they they did Nope, they did um, Get Out, they did Paranormal Activity. Like they're behind like everything. Like they're keeping the ho- like horror alive. I'd say. Do you see the producers or anything when you're on set? Do you, do they have much involvement or do they let you go? Do you know? Not in uh, Fiji, so I met one producer or two producers, and then um, but I, I got to know the director uh, pretty well. And then back in LA, I met with casting and a few, and I met a few of the other like higher up executives when I went into Blumhouse to do like um, ADR. For those of you that don't know, that's just audio digital recording. So if you ever see uh, a sound or like a dialogue um, that if it, a person's like facing behind and stuff, that's normally like all added in like after if they've missed something or something doesn't sound that great you go into adr and they fix that up for you yeah so i've met a few of them um but they're down in i think like somewhere like east hollywood or something like that they got a really nice office yeah. really nice food <laughs> you remember the food classic oh, my- classic aussie mm-hmm. uh <laughs> when performing this from madison when performing a scene versus seeing it when playing are things similar to how you picture them or are they a complete surprise? I think the action of my character it isn't surprising. What's surprising is the camera angle or how you're, how they decided um, this scene to be viewed because there's no camera in your face and there's no like blocking. So you don't set the shots up. You're in a room and you're essentially on a basketball court and on the borders of the basketball court are cameras. And then there's a camera on your face. So you don't know how it's going to look um, 
scenically or like from from like a, a film perspective you just know what action it is you're going to do and that's like pretty much it like you don't know how it's going to turn out but apart from like like expressions and actions and and dialogue and stuff uh, i actually think like it sounds funnier and uh more like genuine watching it than in like rehearsals really? and, yeah. yeah it's like the whole that's like the whole struggle it's like making someone else's words your own and then making whoever's listening or like watching believe what you're saying yeah and you know if that's uh, you never know if that's if, if you've done a good job or a great job or you know or, or if you've done a terrible job until you're like sat there watching it and most people are their worst critic so the game is probably the the first performance where i've been like happy with everything that went down in, oh that's in, good yeah so you, you you're proud of it you are proud 100 yeah good. proud of everything and just um even like look at like it's funny watching and playing the quarry thinking of like what life was like back when it was being when i was filming it and how different life is now you know so it's just a nice little memory you know walk down memory lane mm. and i know you as you said a few times you you became really good friends with zach how did that bond start to come about because i i know you had a few scenes but it, i don't think he was your main scene partner was he is that just no. you just click from the word go, you two? I'd say so. I think we mentioned it something about like paintball and then going to do like and then going to do paintball together, which we still haven't done. But um yeah, I think it, it's just like uh we both came to set with like the same idea, just being like open and like authentically like ourselves. We weren't really out there to gain anything from anyone and we just had like similar interests and um you know similar like goals or visions or dreams whatever you want to call them and i know we all we just like the same stuff so can i, think I the, can i ask those yeah. dreams can you give us an insight to that what what well, are, what are you talking here in terms of like our like we're both very like uh goal driven career orientated people mm. um but not like uh, egotistical douchebags um just just about anything we believe in like doing the work and um yeah not right. handouts from anyone or, or anything like that we believe in but like we believe in ourselves and that's i that's respect been, that man i respect that i'm guessing you've met a few of those along the way though that are the opposite of that yeah but you you meet them everywhere in in everything mm. it's not just it's not just like in our industries, it's rampant everywhere. Everyone's got an ego at the end of the day. It's just about how much you let it, I guess, dictate what you do. Mm. Interesting way to put it, yeah. Um, Jack here says, were you aware of the storyline with Max, Travis and Laura when you were filming or was that all kept secret to you? No, it wasn't. So our first day on set, we rocked up and they'd already filmed the... What do you want? What do we call that? Like the, the epilogue, the yeah. prologue, prologue, prologue. Yeah, yeah. We, they'd already filmed the, uh, all the prologues, so we got to see gameplay and all of that. And given that when we got given the script, it's that's the first, the first thing you, you read. It's not like we didn't know that these people existed, we just didn't know when our stories would all um, yeah. collide. Yeah, yeah. D says, Fun fact Nick is the only werewolf. To have his clothes stay on. When he turns, he has pants on. When he turns back, he has a ripped shirt, but still has one on. There you go. These people coming in with the facts. Mm. <laughs> the only acceptable canon storyline is where Nick survives, and that's it. <laughs> yes. That's from Betty. Uh, what was your favorite relationships in the quarry? From Gray. When you played through, what what sort of connections did you like as a player? I wasn't even focused on that. I was like, I was I was trying to focus on like going down like rocky road and, and being and being this way and this way. It wasn't about the relationships. It was about getting everyone out alive. Get them out alive, yeah. yeah. I wasn't. I like sped, sped through the first my first gameplay because I'm like everyone because I knew how long it had taken. Like everyone's living, and not everyone did, but. Most most of them did, you know. So yeah, I, I didn't like the character relationships or anything. I, it wasn't it wasn't the same um, 
I wasn't doing the same thing that I was doing when I was playing until dawn. Like it was yeah. just it's a different approach. Yeah. I feel like if I was in your position, when I when you meet yourself, I would just try and get them killed and see the different ways. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I'm sadistic. I knew I couldn't get it. I knew it would be ages or Yeah, yeah. Die. So I was just like really just trying to get to the to, to me turning. I was like spamming that shit you know so <laughs> are there uh, do you have any time to like play games in your life at, at this stage in your career because i know you know you're very busy now but is, is there any games that are you know besides the quarry that are taking your fancy at all or what yeah i'm so good at mario kart <laughs> in lockdown um during covid i held the track record like internationally like, whoa and then it went and then and then like i lost it but um yeah i'm i'm fucking good at mario Kart. i haven't played in a while i can pick up the controller right now and just dominate i know all Shit. the turns yeah yeah so that's that's what i mean no one plays with me plays with me anymore because you're no too like, you're too good you yeah. smash them yeah, I do. And then I watched. I was watching Zach play Halo. I haven't played that in years, and I remember being at Hitman's maybe like a month or two ago and just sucking ass at it. I'm like, how the fuck was I so good at this growing up? Like, I just feel like I've lost. I'm back into reading though, so that's more what I'm doing now. Oh, nice. Reading. What are you reading? Um, what is it? I'm reading actually the, the book called The Four Agreements. Fiction, um, fiction or nonfiction? What do you usually go for? It's Normally, I'm normally a fiction kind of kind of guy. My favorite author is uh, Jeffrey Archer. Not many people have heard of him. And Jeffrey then, um, Archer. Yeah. And then my favorite um, my favorite uh, book is The Count of Monte Cristo. What's what what does Jeffrey Archer sort of specialize in? Just these like stories about um, you know I, I don't even know they're all different. Some are like political. Some right. are just like. Uh, it's just all of the. I don't even know brand his his style, but yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's a favorite author. But yeah, my favorite book is Count of Monte Cristo. Love, love, love that book. Good, nice. good. Re- nice. I, I, I admittedly haven't read a book in a long time, so maybe that's the that's the next one I'm getting. Eh? Uh, what is your favorite horror film of all time? There's a question. That's a tough one. Good luck with that one. Um, I'm actually going to say like a really weird answer here. Um, Rope by Alfred Hitchcock. Nice. Okay, now I know you're a cinephile. I love it. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock. Yep. Rope. That's how you do it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's how you. That's how you. A, a real cat and mouse, like chilling that could be made today and people would still like uh love it they probably should remake it actually no don't remake it just make something like (laughs) you know you know if they remake it it won't be as good evan you know i spoke too soon yeah uh here's a here's the toughest question you'll ever get you ready jennifer Um, what's your favorite sandwich crust on or off no, I actually like a good bacon and egg and cheese toasty. So that's crossed on. Because nice. in America, New York, all they've got is like bagels and bagels like just a subpar to yeah. a, a. Do they yeah. do they have donuts over there for breakfast or is that a myth? Yeah, but they're not like um. They're not traditional. Like, amazing! Like I love a jam. I miss a jam donut. You know, like the hot <laughs> donut. Yeah. They're putting jelly donuts and they're cold and they're no, it's just different. It's a different culture here. What about Cadbury chocolate? You got no, there's no Cadbury there, is there? There is, but it's oh. a different. Our Cadbury's made in, in Oz. Um, yeah. And their Cadbury really sucks. <clears throat> yeah. I'd struggle, man, because even with just sausage rolls and meat pies and. You there's know. a place in Brooklyn that does Aussie meat pies and sausage oh. rolls. I'm, I'm bought it, but. Yeah, for a long time, there's like two cafes, I think, in Los Angeles that were like an hour away from me. And that's like not even in traffic. So they're like two and a half hours. And I'd make to get 
you know, a meat pie and stuff. I've learned how to like make sausage rolls, but yeah, it's just kind of like a thing on, so or like a yeah, yeah. So you you're based in Brooklyn at the moment, right? But I'm guessing you travel to LA all the time, or how does that work? Or you try to work in New York, or well, I mean, every time I've auditioned, it's been like you know remote, so I'm able to just do it in like wherever I'm at. So and, and a lot of stuff doesn't film in Los Angeles anymore. It oh, really? Like, right. There's only a select few things, like a lot of network stuff does um, that. Yeah, it's it's all you can. You don't really need to be in LA anymore to to um, to work. Well, that's can, that's good to hear. Yeah, like I'd love to go back home at some point and spend some time back home and fly, you know, fly here. But um, you know, we'll see about that. Hopefully, hopefully, one day. Who's your dream director to work with? It's a bit weird, but um, this guy called Robert Rodriguez. He did this movie called Machete and Spy Kids. Really, Robert? Rod- wow, I wouldn't have thought you would pick him. He's like an auteur. He's an auteur director, and for those people who don't know what an auteur is, it's pretty much just like if you see a Wes Anderson film, you know it's a Wes Anderson because it looks like it's on a set, the color scheme, everything like that. It's got a, a feel and like a look that only you know that director could execute and. It's the same with um, Robert Rodriguez. His movies are just like these sick, fast action paced kind of sp- paying homage like spaghetti westerns, but not. I don't know. It's he's he's really good. He did. Did he do um, a leader? Battle Angel. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I didn't like. Yeah, you I didn't like, like that. No. Right. Too know. much CGI. Yeah, I think it just fell short for me. I, I feel like he's always been the guy doing things like on a budget and making it look cool. So like to see he did Sin City if, if yeah. anyone's seen, and that was fucking brilliant. <clears throat> that was sick, yeah. It was so well made and so well done. So yeah, yeah him. Bruce Willis, yeah, yeah. I remember watching the Spy Kid films as a kid and loving them, but I don't. Do they hold up? I don't know. I guess I guess they do. Yeah, they do for me because yeah. I, I they would for us because we'd watch it, you know. And, yeah, and stout. I'm not sure if uh, any kids would like it now. I don't know. Maybe that's a maybe that's actually a reboot worth happening. I think you could do. They could do Spy Kids pretty well now. The, I'm, I'm giving you pretty random questions here, mate. Bear with me. But what do you um? What do you think of Marvel? Are you a Marvel fan, or are you not in? The, you're not a fan, like because I feel like you're either in or you're out these so days. I, I'm actually more of a DC boy. Oh. I, reading the graphic novels and the person i always wanted to play was the red hood jason todd so that's batman's second robin um i love red me. hood yeah but i mean i look i love what i don't think dc are doing very well cinematically um no. i did doing, i mean aquaman was okay I'm interested to see the Flash, although apparently like Ezra Miller's gone off the walls. So it'd be interesting Mate. to see. Yeah, it's in shambles. Yeah. I think, yeah. And then you got yeah, Aquaman too with um you know who in that as well. Um but then like Thor. I love Thor and like Loki. I love the Loki series and I used to like Avengers. I just feel I mean Marvel, I just feel like there's so many now that like I, I don't want to sit there and like watch all of one division or all of um Hawkeye to figure out what's happening in a series I actually want to watch. I I, I just feel like this it's too saturated, m- isn't it? Yeah. Too saturated at the moment. But if they're hiring and they're watching, I'm always available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to do like a DC movie or something like that. That'd be You'd be a good red red hood, yeah. Jason Todd. Yeah. yeah. What about Robin? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's Jason, I'm too old to play a Robin, I think. You Unless reckon? Like- really? Yeah, yeah, I guess he is pretty young, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I wouldn't mind playing um, uh, the old man Bruce Wayne line, like a series where that kid just, uh, this like 19 year old stumbles on the Batcave and then all of a sudden he's like the new Batman. And that'd be pretty cool if they ever get around to doing that i mean they're going to people run out of ideas all the time so. <laughs> uh um 
Evan, is it harder to make a film or a video game, do you think, in terms of the acting? I mean, I know you're not making the game, but in terms of your part, <laughs> in terms of your part, uh, what's what was more challenging, do you think? I think I can't, you can't really, um, give, like, that was, we, we did the quarry like it was a movie, so... Mm -hmm it's for me it's what i imagine what most marvel and dc things would have been done where it's a lot of it's blue screen and you're standing you know and pretending that something's there and you've got to really like use your imagination so i honestly just say they're both the same thing and it, and it's just like moving from one set to another the process is always going to be different depending on like what you're doing so both of them had their challenges yeah like I was in prosthetics and wearing a wig, so I was sweating like a motherfucker, just like everything. <laughs> then, you know, when we did the quarry, you know, you have to pretty much like imagine that a lot of things are there. And because of uh, COVID um, restrictions, we all couldn't be in one room to film with each other. So some of the time you're talking to no one that's there. But that's the same thing when you, when you see a close-up of a character in a movie or a show and they're like looking a lot of the time they're not looking at the, the person that, that you think they're talking to they're looking at the camera and speaking as if someone's there so they all have their challenges mm. what sort of dog do you have by the way that's barking out there prick i what love it, him dude. what is it what type Little mini poodle oh uh, <laughs> poodle, and he gets lonely when he's um left alone so he just freaks out Oh. Very angry. Yeah. yeah. Apologies, yeah. Apologies for all. Oh, no, you're all good, brother. Uh, Bella, if you could play anyone, any of the other characters, which one would you have played in the quarry? If, if there was no Nick and you had to pick someone else, who would you have taken? Zach's mm -hmm. character? Maybe Max. As well. Max, yeah. Yeah. This one bit. I like that. Yeah. Silas the dog boy. No. <laughs> Who plays Silas, by the way? No idea. I don't even know if it's a... It's not a, a person, is it? No. There was no voice lines, no. Um, we know how Nick copped it or not, but how would Evan make it through the night of Hackett's Quarry? Any werewolf survival plans, Evan? That's from Rhiannon. Yeah, don't go outside. <laughs> listen to the listen to the advice. It would be like, why can't we just part? Like, I understand the whole fire concept and everything like that, but that's stupid. You can just do that inside. Yeah. All right, I'll give you I'll give you a couple more, Evan, because I know you're a busy boy. Um, where are the Bunnings Bunning snags? Now that's only a reference you and me are going to know. I know, but yeah, the Bunning snags. Where, where <laughs> Are they? They're not existing here. We've got a place called Home Depot. No barbecue. It, it's terrible. I mean, I'm, that's another thing I've been craving. That I can't get. I won't be able to get until I go back home. I don't think we can translate that one, Evan, unfortunately. No. Uh, um, Evan, since you're a DC fan, what did you think of Batman 2022? Oh, with our packs. I thought it was a really strong cast. Um it's cool that they went in such a young direction and it was like Batman year two or three and not like how they did it with um, Nolan's, you know, and Batman, like the the origins, like we know who this person is. He's just not the fully realized, um, you know, Cape Crusader and this like symbol that ev everyone knows yet. I loved it. I thought the acting was brilliant. Um, maybe went on a tad bit too long, but it was necessary. And Paul Dano was a standout for me. Uh, and John Tatura as um, the mob boss, really, really, really good stuff. And Zoe Kravitz was um, just amazing. She was a standout for me, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I was really impressed. Even uh, Colin Farrell was the Penguin. Yeah. Well, so well, they're turning it into a series now, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Evan, do you want to say anything to these lovely fans that have well, this is we've been going for an hour already. It's flown by. Anything you want to say to them? Honestly, thank you so much for all the love. I'm trying to get back and like 
reply to everyone who sends me a message or draws a picture or creates a video. It's been, um, I don't know, this has been the best project I've, I've ever worked on. And it's because of the fans and the reception and just, I know you're all like so uh, appreciative of, of the work we've done, but it, I don't know, just that, yeah, honestly, like thank you from the bottom of my heart. And, um, you know, if there ever is a, a quarry sequel, I'll, I'll do it all for you. And uh, yeah, big love. Big love, brother. Any um, Anything you want to plug? Any projects you got coming up or anything like that? We have something I'm filming later in the year, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. It's under wraps. Um, yeah. But we'll be back home, uh, which is cool. Are you feel, you've done, you've shot it or are you shooting it now? We're set to, we're set to shoot. I'm, I'm uh, in about uh, about six weeks time. We're going to be hitting the gym with a personal trainer. Is this a of, is this a big role or you can't say anything at all? The lead. It's not like um, it's not like a Marvel thing or anything. No, like no, that. no, no. I, I, I know, but it'll be. It's a good. Um, it's it's a really good piece. It's a good strong character piece. It's um, nice based on my cultural background um, as well. So, yeah, it's just like it'll be a really exciting project and some uh, great actors are on board. And, uh, yeah, can't wait for everyone to see that. Awesome, man. Well, continued success. I hope you uh, flourish and and knock it out of the park. And um, all the best, man. Thank you for taking the time today. So much for having me, Dan. Really appreciate it. It's good hearing an Aussie voice. (laughs) Take care, mate. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. greatest interviewer of all time Dan Allen the greatest interviewer of all time Dan Allen the greatest interviewer of all time Dan Allen gaming what do you think guys that is your boy Evan he graciously gave up an hour of his time and it was great to talk to another Aussie down under, mate. A couple of references there. AFL, Bunning Snags, that a lot of you would have absolutely no fucking clue what we're talking about. But hopefully it was still entertaining for you. Um, And yeah, look, we are going to get Zach Tinker on next. Uh, we're just working out a time with him. You know, being the 4th of July, he was he was busy. But now that that is over... We're going to work out a time with him. And then, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping we can get Miles on. So what I might do right now is I'm going to tweet Miles. And if you could, guys, help me out. I'm going to tweet him now. And if you could, maybe say you'd like to see it. That might help. Hey, Smiles. Smiles Guthrie would love to have you. Would love to have you on my show. Phenomenal performance in the quarry. What do you reckon? I'm going to send that out. And you guys are going to help me out with a few likes and uh, retweets and what you need to do. How does that sound? Hey, Smiles. would love to have you on my show. Phenomenal performance in the quarry. Would love to chat. Would love to chat. There you go. I uh, I just sent that tweet out. If you could, if you're on Twitter, give it a like, respond to it, and uh, we'll get that sorted. Because he, I'd really want to talk to um, to Miles, and obviously I really want to talk to Zach. So hopefully we'll get that sorted as well. And then Halston Sage, yeah, I mean she's pretty busy, so I'm not sure about her. But well, look, I'll try. Um, you know, Ethan, um, Lance, there, there's still other people we could try. Definitely. 
I'm so happy he answered my Bunnings snack question. I love that, Gray. Well done. That was that was an all timer. I tweeted him, but he didn't notice. What'd you tweet him? Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Keep keep replying. I appreciate that. Give it a retweet and and just keep moving that wheel because we want to get him on. I think me and him would have a blast. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. That was um, all good. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, it stays. If you missed, if you're coming in uh, late, guys, this is uh, this is. I always keep the streams up. I'm not gonna make you watch it live if you can't. Um, and I usually put time stamps, time stamps up as well. So if you, you know, if there's some things you don't want to listen to, you don't have to. Give you the timestamps. You got to cater to everyone. That's my motto. But what do you think, Evan? Guys, what, what do you think? He's a DC fan. He's an Aussie boy. He's uh, got a new piece he's working on. He he seems pretty grounded. He's about the work. Very professional guy. You know. Um, yeah, I, I, it flew by. I could ask him questions all day. You know, it's really fascinating talking to some of these guys. Super chill, yeah. Thanks, James. I appreciate your help as always, mate. Uh, also, if you guys are fans of Red Dead Redemption, um, I have interviewed Rob Weedoff before and we are getting him back on the show. I believe that's happening... When is that happening? Um, I believe that's happening the 17th of July. Okay. Red Dead Redemption fans. John Marsden. Red Dead Redemption. And we might even get Arthur Morgan back as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I love Rob. One of my all-time guests. Uh, he is such a good guy. So definitely... Stay tuned for that one. And then as we head into uh, September, we've got The Last of Us remake. Wouldn't it be great to get some of that cast on? You know, Troy Baker again, Ashley Johnson. Oh, wouldn't that be fantastic? Get some of those guys on. And then we move into Modern Warfare, where we'll be getting that cast on. That's already sort of confirmed, guys. The Modern Warfare 2 cast. Uh, and I know this, you know, this is a variety of games, so not all of them are going to appeal to everyone, but I try to keep it quite broad. Resident Evil Village, uh, the DLC. We'll be talking to Duke again, hopefully. Uh, some surprises there as well. Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but look out for that as well. Um, you know, there's a lot to look forward to this year. So I hope you'll be on the ride with me. I'm good, Dracula. Thank you. It is 5 a.m. in Australia, in Melbourne right now. So, and I haven't slept, if you can't tell. He was super nice, very chill. Yeah, very chill interview. That's, that's what we like. We like to keep it chill. Um, and I've been talking to Siobhan as well, um, off air. I recommended a capture uh, device for her. We're trying to set up a stream. So when she does stream, I'm, you know, you'll notice that I posted, um, I've posted some content from Milestream because I want to get their name out there. Um, and they've got no problem with me doing it. I wouldn't just do it for anyone. Um, I think I did it for Nicole as well back in the day, Nicole Tompkins, Resident Evil, posted a couple of her stream clips. But, yeah, I'm posting that. So I might post some of hers as well, some highlights, just to get the name out there because um, it really helps them. You know, when they come on this show, they gain thousands of followers across the board. Um, which is great. That's what we want to do. That's what the show's about, giving these guys a platform to shine and you know introducing you guys to new actors 
new voice actors, you know, someone like, you know, my most successful interview, in terms of numbers, right, or one of, is the Lady D one with Maggie Robertson. She had never worked on a video game before. She was relatively unknown. Before the interview, she had a certain amount of followers. After, they'd gone up. I couldn't believe how many they'd gone up when we were live. So, you know, there is an impact there. Um, and it's great to see. She deserves it and some of the other, you know, a lot of them deserve it. So that's why I like to, to do it and I enjoy doing it. So I will continue to do it. Um, and I will be playing The Last of Us Remake, yeah. Um, you know, what else have we got? We've got, there was a, there's a little horror film, little horror game that I've been playing called Madison. I, I don't know, I might, I might make content on it, we'll see. Um, you know, we've still got a lot of quarry to go. We've got, um, we've got God of War Ragnarok. I'd love to get that cast on. That'd blow up. We could get that cast on this show. Wow, that could be huge. But going to be very tough. I'm not... I never hold my breath. You know, I actually posted something for Quarry. I don't know who, if any of you saw it. I posted... Um, sorry, guys. I can't get a hold of anyone. This was a week ago or so. I'm like... Sorry, guys, I've contacted everyone. No one wants to come on the show. Then literally the next day, three of them are ready to go. It's just timing half the time. It's just they might not see it. Are they are they free? You know, it's, um, you know, games like Cyberpunk, I was able to get pretty much the whole entire main cast. Resident Evil, the same. This game, we've gotten a few. Then you get games like... Um, was a recent one where I just couldn't get anyone um, for example Elden Ring you know I got a quite a few but a lot I didn't get a lot of rejection you know there's 50 cast members there and I only ended up getting about 10 so that's 40 rejections because I in I emailed every single one I contacted stalked contacted emailed you know that's a lot of rejection um, Guys, this is good. This is good. I think you'll be able to... You'll probably see this. I think you'll probably see this. Let's give it a final push, guys. If you've got any... If you're on Twitter or anything, just quick final push on this. Um, yeah, so we've got God of War. We've got Last of Us. Metal Hellsinger. Look it up. I'm really excited. Gotham Knights. Not sure. At the moment, the Callisto Protocol. I can't wait for that game. Cannot wait. Hogwarts Legacy could be a big one as well. So there's a lot coming. Just got to see how it pays, plays out. There's the Avatar game. I mean, there's a lot coming. It's a good time to be a gamer. Um, at the moment, it's a bit of a lull. But it's going to start picking up September onwards. Um, I'm probably going to go for a little holiday break in a couple of weeks. Me and the girlfriend, recharge, regroup, and then attack the second half of the year, full force. And hopefully we'll hit 200k subs sooner rather than later. And we'll be looking good. Do you like Madison? I've heard mixed reviews. Yeah, look, I can't say anything, James, at the moment, but um, we'll see, mate. We'll see. It's uh, It's different. Itchy. Really good at connecting with people. I wish I could be like that Kai. I appreciate that Kai. I love the quarry. I'm currently on my eighth run. It's so good. Thanks for interviewing, chatting with the legends. No problemo. This is my favorite stream now. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. James, appreciate you. Kisma. Anime boy, he's back. I really wish that the actor for Ethan Winters was in an interview, but oh well. Well, look, I've he, he's a very private person, so you know he doesn't do any interviews. It's not like he's um, denying just me. He's denying everyone. Uh, and you know, Ethan Winters, Dylan's in the chat right now. I hope you too. Hope you um, 
Hope you're doing well, mate. He knows that Ethan Winters is a very interesting character that some people loved and some people hated. <laughs> uh, I tend to buy into the charm of him. You know, definitely could have... Uh, I think it gets lost with the cultural differences from Japan and I think that's where it gets lost, but... I've played t -Low, yeah. I've played Last of Us 1 and 2. Dan, can you get a... Can you get Ariel Winters on the show? I'd love to. Probably not going to happen, but you never know. I have seen some interviews where she talks about the quarry. I might, um... Put something together. Uh, reach out and maybe put something together. Yeah. All right, guys, it's time for bed, but, um, you know, I appreciate you very much, and uh, look out for the Zach interview. That's coming up soon, and hopefully the Miles. We've reached out to him on Twitter. You guys have helped me out there with um, with everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email his agent. His, uh, I'm going to Instagram. I'm going to flood him, and hopefully we can get him on. Otherwise, we tried. That's all you can do. You can try. And what's the worst that can happen? All right, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to leave you with a, a classic song. This is The Last Samurai. Hans Zimmer. But it's a remake. Hans Zimmer, The Last Samurai score. But it's a bit of a remake by Ashton Gleckman. Phenomenal. Take care, guys. Have a great day, night, wherever you are. I appreciate you. Listen to this. You want to stick around for this song. It's beautiful. Have a good one, guys.